Hey guys, how you doing? Doc Vinyl here. Again here. I'm Wreck of Time. And the police. So I thought I'd uh, start out with a little uh, police music there. Um, so I'd like to do uh, our next uh, show on the police. Um, not a big discography. Uh, not a ton of time here. Uh, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five albums. Uh, pretty cool. Tight, tight band. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the origins, uh, especially Andy Summers, who's a little, about 10 years older than the rest of the members. And then we'll talk about the progression and then the albums and what have you. So uh, let's get into it for the police. All right. Well, police were formed in 1977, and the three members, um, pretty easy, power trio. Uh, Andy Summers on guitar uh, and various other instruments, uh, staying on bass and vocals and some other instruments, and, of course, Stuart Copeland on drums. Mm, the band started in 1977, but to do a little background, they'd have been hanging around the California area, and then they met in London. Um, and Andy Summers had been in a couple machine, a couple bands before. Um, there's a kind of a legend story going around in 1966. He was in a band called Dantelion Chariot, which is kind of a psychedelic uh, acid rock band. And they had actually met Jimi Hendrix when he went to London. So it was kind of cool, that little story there. But he was also in a, machine, a band called Soft Machine. Um, and he was in The Animals periodically in and out. And so he had a lot of session work, a lot of guitar work. So Andy Summers had a lot of experience in the music industry. Well, the story goes they all met in London and the pub scene and it was basically uh, an idea to put together a band and play some type of music and they were kind of following the new trend which at the time in 1977 the trend obviously as I talked about a little bit was punk rock which I will cover in another episode the whole punk rock explosion and the new wave from Great Britain which they called and talked about so they kind of went with a kind of a different kind of thing here it was kind of interesting um, the music itself is kind of a blending of punk reggae jazz rock um, again, very, very distinct and very individual and very great, great, great musicians, uh, great ideas. But um, they came with very inauspicious beginnings. Um, they didn't have any money and they could barely get together to do a recording and they had to borrow some money from Stuart Copeland's brother um, who, uh, who had lent lend them a couple thousand pounds to do a recording to you know, get a tape out there and get themselves kind of noticed. And, uh, it was kind of interesting because they did some recordings and they did some work with the money and then you know, they go at night, they had to record at night when other bands weren't there and what have you and they had to get their time in. Um, they recorded most of the tracks for the first album, which is pretty cool, which we're going to go over in a minute. And uh, his brother came in and said, oh my God, this is terrible. What is this? Oh my God, I thought the music was terrible until he heard the song Roxanne. And then he was like, whoa. And he then pitched the band and he was really involved in getting them kind of their, their uh, traction going at the beginning of the band. Bum, 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 bum. Very cool. So, uh, that's kind of the, the story of how they kind of began. And of course, they all had varied backgrounds. Um, Summers had been a session guitarist, as I've already mentioned. Stuart Copeland had been a drummer, young guy. He's an American, Stuart Copeland, born in Virginia. Um, been playing the, the scene and now jazz bands would have you kind of starving. Um, and then, of course, Sting, of course, with his name being uh, <clears throat> Gordon Sumner. We never went by that, but of course, they called him Sting. And then the story is, I guess, he used to wear a tie, it looked like a wasp, and then Sting, and it kind of stuck, and that was it. And there you go. Um, and Sting was a school teacher for a couple of years, and you know, you hear that in some of his songs, Don't Stand So Close to Me, which we'll talk a little bit about later. So they kind of had varied backgrounds, and then they came together and they gelled. I mean, the rhythmic beats of the drummer, Stuart Copeland, amazing style drummer, a really very unique style. Um, put forward a sound that was really, really good. Uh, Sting's voice and songwriting capabilities were really, really impressive, and Andy Summers' guitar playing is uh, second to none. So let's get into it. The first album comes out in 19... 77 and it's called Outlandus Demore. Uh 1978 I'm sorry uh, they, they were formed in 77 and this album comes out in 78 it was like early 70s late late 77 early 78 but 1978 was Outlandus Demore. Um, this really hit the scene great album Every one of their albums have hits on it. I mean, so it's like it's a very economical use of music here. There's no dead albums here. And when I rank them, it's going to just be personal preference. It's not going to be like one album is actually better than the other. They're all excellent. This is a very raw format. You can see by the cover here some of the influences and then the whole aspect of they're all wearing blonde hair. Now, there's a story about the blonde hair, which is interesting. I thought I'd go over it. I found a documentary. I thought it was kind of interesting. 
Um, they were trying to get a kind of a look for the band. They liked the music, but you know, you know, they had to get a hook or something. Get you know, what's the band look like? What are they going to do? So they actually did this for a commercial for Wrigley Spearmint Gum, something about you know, which never aired by the way. So they dyed their hair blonde all together, so they all were kind of matching. So uh, the record company loved it. They said, "Oh, that's awesome!" They put it on the album, and they thought this was kind of like a kind of like a punk thing kind of going on. They kind of had this thing going on, and it really wasn't. But it was kind of by accident. It wasn't like they were trying to do that. And a lot of people accused them right along. They were posers and that was not what they were, but they really weren't. Um, so this album has Next to You, which I was just playing when we began. Uh, so Lonely, great song. Roxanne, classic hit on that. Hole in My Life and Peanuts, all really good side one stuff. Then side two opens up with Can't Stand Losing. I can't, I can't, I can't stand losing. Great song, very rhythmic beating. Uh, awesome stuff. Truth hits some everybody. Born in the 50s. Uh, Be My Girl Sally and um, Masofa, Masoka Tango, which is their cool instrumental stuff going on in them and the songs are pretty well written. But really what hooks this album is Roxanne and Can't Stand Losing. I mean, and next to you. Those three songs are really very big. Radio hits. They were short. Um, and the band really took off. Very, very big. This album really put them on and all of a sudden, boom. 1978, they were this kind of the new big hit band, uh, The Police. And again, they were kind of trumped together in the new wave and the punk rock scene, but kind of cool. I mean, great, great stuff. The second album comes out in 1979. It's called Regatta de Blanc. Oh, the T-shirt, as you can see, same there. Um, Regatta de Blanc, great album. <clears throat> This does a little bit more, introduces more of the kind of reggae beats and more jazz in it. This has Message in a Bottle, which was a very big hit. Regatta de Blanc, the uh, title track. Um, it's All Right For You is really good on side one. We have Death Worth. Death Mouth. And side two is Walking on the Moon, very good kind of philosophical song written. Of course, most of these songs are written by Sting. Um, on Another Day, Contact, uh, uh, Does Everyone Stare, and No Time miss time and and really really good stuff and of course you got the hair thing going on and uh, uh, again this album really kind of solidifies them it's not just a one hit wonder they have a couple more hits and the music's going to, to, to the next track kind of a different style um, again love the albums love the fact that we can kind of see you know where they're going and you know the, the sheets and what have you now the next album is the album that starts to produce uh, more of a mainstream takes them from the kind of club scene, rock and roll, uh, punk rock to more of a mainstream set. And that, of course, is uh, 1980, Zenyatta Mandata. Now, Zenyatta Mandata had the big hit, uh, Don't Stand So Close to Me, which, of course, uh, refers to uh, Sting's earliest career as supposedly a relationship he had with a student and da-da-da-da-da. Um, you can get that in the song. Um, very interesting. Of course, it's a very, you know, tension driven but it's a very very good song and that's one of the big hits on there driven to tears is very good when the world is running um, running uh, running down you make the best of what's still around canary in a coal mine another classic great song voices inside my head and bombs away bombs away is actually really good i like the, the guitar and it's really cool stuff and and then there's the d do do the da 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 um that's a great song it's fun um of course they got ranked on that for like i mean what is this i mean it's just like what's the title of the song it just looked like it sounds like nonsense um but it is an interesting song it does have an interesting aspects to it uh, behind my camel is really good man in the suitcase shadows in the rain and the other ways of stopping um, this song started to get into the arenas this is when it started to play uh, bigger bigger venues uh, and the police now were really on top now the next album is the album that puts them over the top that really puts them as a mega band and one of the biggest bands of that 80s and a lot of people were really jumping on board and that's of course the 1981 release of Ghost in the Machine um, this album had a lot of big hits on it <clears throat> Start off with Spirits in the Material World, really good, you know, a statistic, uh, government statistic. Um, I don't want to be a statistic in a government machine. I mean, it's just amazing stuff, cool lines. Every little thing she does is magic, which was the big hit. Everyone loved it. It was on the videos, MTV, Sting singing the whole thing. Invisible Sun, really good. Hungry for You and Demolition Man. All of Side 1 really has solid, solid music. I mean, right from this time. Side 2 has Too Much Information, Rehumanize Yourself, really cool song. One World, Not Three. Um... Omega Man, Secret Journey, and Darkness. They all kind of have this kind of rhythmic thing about a kind of a diastopic look at the future, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I think that's kind of Sting's influence, kind of an intellectual aspect of like, you know, things going wrong, like spirits in the material world especially. Uh, but really, this album really puts them up there. And it's also showing uh, beginnings of where they were going and as a band. And it's really kind of blindsided because we really thought that, you know, this band is, is very successful. And then their last album in 1983 is Synchronicity. And this album was really, really big. Um, this, this yielded mega, mega hits. Uh, you know, the bigger commercial hits, I call them. You know what I mean? This one has Synchronicity. My personal favorite songs are Synchronicity, 
part one and Super Deuce part two. I just love those two songs. Um, this has uh, Oh My God, Mother, Miss Gradenko, which I always loved. Really cool song. And then, of course, it has Every Breath You Take, which, of course, that's one of their biggest hits. And everyone was like, whoa. Tea, tea, and, Sah and tea in the Sahara is really good. And Wrapped Around Your Finger, really cool. And King of Pain. Again, this really had a lot of hits on it and really produced them. They were at the top of the game. They went on world tours. They were selling out. They were one of the biggest bands in the early 80s, 82, 83, 84, right around. I mean, the police were the band. This was to be their last album. Um, the band breaks up in 1986, which um, it's not because of, you know, they hated each other, what have you. I think they all wanted to go in different directions too. Copeland went on to make uh, soundtracks, as did Andy Summers. Sting had a very fruitful and very productive uh a solo career. They did go back together once in 2007 or 8 around there. I think they did a concert series. They played a bunch of tours and then that was it. Um, they, they all, they're all friends. I mean, um, the documentaries I've watched on them, that's really interesting. It's not like they were mean. It's not like, you know, the Journey or the Eagles and no hell freezes over. We hate each other. No, nothing like that at all. They just were, you know, they did their thing and that was it. And they all kind of went in different directions. Um, will they get back together? I don't know. Maybe they, they might. I mean, they're very unpredictable. Like Sting would call them up and he, like when they did that thing in the, that last concert, they went on a tour for a couple shows. They just called up and Andy said, yeah, okay, Stuart Copeland, blah, 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 got together and they just started playing. I was like, Phew. I mean, that, you have to really admit that that's no obvious personality conflict. That's, you know, that's just what they want to do. Um, the impact of pol the police, really cool. They're hard to pigeonhole and say, oh, they're this kind of band, that kind of band. They're really not. I consider them a kind of a linkage between the new wave, punk, and rock, and then this, the later music in the late 80s. They really very influential and did a lot of cool stuff and really, really liked the police. Um, this is one of those bands that a lot of people like. Um, Sting had the hooks. The songs are well written and crafted. The drumming. I mean, I'm a big drummer, guys. You all know. And I love the drumming. Stuart Copeland's an amazing drummer to listen to. Very influential. Even Neil Peart of Rush mentioned how good Stuart Copeland was. And Neil Peart had already been pretty much established by 1978. I mean, he'd been, you know, from Rush. And he's like, wow, look at this new drummer. He's insane. I mean, and he, his beats are really, really good. He... he combination reggae, rock beats, and all, like, all kinds of stuff. Syncopation is amazing. Um, the music as well, there's, there's no bad album here. Now the ranking of the album that I'm gonna do, it's just a personal preference. I'm just gonna, you know, it's not like one's better than the other, but I mean, to me, uh, you might not agree, you might go, eh, Steve, that's not it. Oh, you know, that's, uh, you know, come on, doc, that's not right, you know, but no. Um, it, it is what it is, so I'm gonna give you my rankings. Okay, uh, the least favorite of all their albums, I have to say, is, um, to me is Zenyatta Mandata. Um, don't stand so close to me. It's okay. That's you know decent song. Some of the other songs on there are good. I just find it to, to be a transitional album between their early stuff, the first two albums, and then the later stuff. So it, it's experimental and it's cool. But it, again, like I said, it's not my it's not my favorite album. So uh, that's that's number that's the least. That's number six. Number five. I'm sorry. Uh, number four. Uh, I would go with their second album, Regatta de Blanc. Um, again, I like it. It's got a couple good songs. on Message in a Bottle, We Got the Block, and it's good for the, the early stuff. I like it. It just seems to be an extension about Landis Damore. Now, Landis Damore, like, is just a little fresher. It just seems more like boom in your face. And this just seems like, uh, this could have been like, some of these songs could have been like on side two about Landis Damore. So it's like, uh, like an extension, like, like hidden tracks, you know, you know. So again, strong album. Don't get me wrong, but eh, not my favorite. Okay, now we're getting down to the other ones. And the next one would be, um, I'd have to say is uh, uh, Synchronicity. Uh, I like this album. Don't get me wrong. My two favorite tracks on this are Synchronicity 1 and Synchronicity 2. I really love the instrumentals on those. And I love the keyboards and the, the vocals. But this, this, this obviously is one of the overplayed albums of these. The songs wrapped around your finger. You know, uh, every, you know, every breath you take. I mean, it's a little overplayed. It's a, and it's also, to me, a little Sting dominated. Uh, more so than the other albums. And this is really rotates around Sting. The other albums are kind of more of a collective input. Where this seems to be more like Sting. The Sting show. So that's that one. And number two <clears throat> is Ghost of the Machine. I love this album. This album's really great. The instrumentals are cool. The music's great. Little Spirits and the Material, one of my favorite songs by them. Um, every little thing she does is magic. It's really cool. It's a soft, romantic kind of song, but I like the way it's written. I like the way it's crafted. The drum beats are insane. Um, very cool. I love um, Darkness and Omega Man's really good. Demolition Man's a great song. Again, really cool. My number two. And then my number one is, of course, their premier album, My Land is Demore. I really love this album. I love uh, Neat Next to You. I love the whole side one. It has kind of that kind of punchy, punchy 
rocky punk kind of new wavy thing going on it's a little raw it, it, it's just really good i really like it a lot i like the sign can't stand losing i really like it's really good and then even right up to masoka tanga it, it's just really just a good good album and it's one of my favorite and it's pretty close and if you ask me another day maybe ghost of the machine will be number one and this will be number two i don't know but they're, they're both pretty close now you may not agree um but that's what the comments are for so please give me a like um shoot out a like to me you know what i mean or a uh, you know comment or whatever uh let me know what you think um you know i like to hear you guys and talk about this and tell me you know what you think about the police and you know talk back and forth and of course i wanted to put out a shout out again one more time to um max j records to my buddies um they're going to offer a 10 percent discount on any police that he has in stock now since the store's closed because of the current crisis um you can order it online of course on at maxjrecords.com um check it out um, he has plenty of police in stock. He can get it. He has it. He has a couple of used stuff. He also has some of the 180 gram stuff, which is really cool. If you're into it, go for it. All right, that's the police. I hope you like it. Hope you like my little show. It's a quick one, kind of like the cream. Um, and I will see you guys soon. I got some other stuff lined up that's pretty cool. So I'll talk to you guys later.